Hello, this is Victor and in that video I will explain the main paint job on the hippogriff of Luan Lencoven. So be prepared for the part 4 of the assembly and painting work on the Luan Lencoven and the hippogriff. So this is the fourth video and in the first videos I explain how I did the base, how I paint the base and the first steps on the assembly of the hippogriff and the first painting parts of the hippogriff. In that video we'll cover the main work on the painting of the hippogriff and expect some more videos explaining how I, I paint the rider and some other parts and the final assembly. So let's go with that video. So as you see I will start with the Bart painting and in that Bart I want to paint some yellow lines. So to mark the spacing of the yellow lines, first I did some small marks at the bottom of the bar, as you can see in that picture. To have a good cover on the red, I was using Yander Dark Sun from the All Foundation lineup. So today I will recommend the equivalent in base paints from Games Workshop. Here you see how I'm doing the marking on the barding for the lines on the other side of the part. So once I mark the spacing of the lines, I paint the line, the, I paint the whole vertical line to see how it's looking like. This is just to mark where the lines will go and see if I did the right spacing. And I do in both sides to be sure that I'm doing the right spacing in both sides. And then I join the lines on the top of the part. So it's again just to be sure that the lines are more or less on the same spacing and if in case I need some correction as the lines at the end as you will see will be thicker than what I'm painting here. So now the, that I mark more or less where I want the lines I will start working on them and make them thicker. So what I do is using the same color, the Anden Darsan, I'm making the line thicker and I try to keep same spacing between yellow and red lines. So I want the same width for both lines on the bar. Here you see the other side. So I want to have the same spacing. And of course also on the top. Now I applied golden yellow on the red areas because I want to I want to go for a more bright yellow than the dark sun. I also leave some of the deep part of the wrinkles without with the original dark sun yellow. Of course on the red I do the same and I apply corn red to have some more bright red. I leave the borders a little bit darker to have good contrast with the yellow. And then I use blood red also on top of the red because I want to have mm, better highlights. As you see, I also apply the same technique on the shield. So the background of the lion of the shield will be also red. So I start with that red and I go, I'm going up in color to the bl to blood red. The yellow is highlighted using using dawn yellow from Citadel. And then I use a screaming school for the lion that is in, in the shield. And for the border of the shield, I decide to use Auric Armor Gold. Here you see the result on the other side after applying also Auric Armor Gold. As you can see, I'm deviating from the original colors of Low and Core. And this is just to make a small homage to my home country where the colors of the flag are yellow and red. So on the lion I decided to apply a wash of seraphine sepia to have the shading. And then while the seraphine sepia on the lion is drying up I decided to go to another part of the hippogriff. You will see that I jump a lot of times from one part to another of the hippogriff is, is because I want to to be sure that the other part is completely dry before painting on top. So here what I do is I, I paint the the hands or, or the clothes from the 
hippogriff and also the, the pig using this Cambry brown. And as I explained before, now I go back to end the work on the lion and I clean the wash using the original screaming school. At that point I also decide to paint all the feathers with the same color. So this means that I also paint of course the wings with the same screaming school. Here another overview of the hippogriff. And as usual for all the silvery metallic parts I apply first Abaddon Black as a base. And I use Rumfang Steel, one of the clearer silver colors, to paint all the metallic parts. Here you can see part of the bard and the foot of the rider. And here the small armor plate that he has on the head and the armor plates that have on the legs. As you can see, the armor plate on the head, I leave the middle part in black because this will go in red and golden. And a better picture after applying the silver color. On the feathers that has at the back of the neck and below the peak, I decide to do a wash with seraphine sepia. And then I use noon oil in all the armor plates metallic parts and I also use a little of noon oil to have deeper shading on the tail of the hippogriff. So here you have also after applying noon oil on the head armor plate and at the bottom of the picture on the leg armor plate. Maybe in that picture you can appreciate better the result after applying null oil on the armor plates. So after applying null oil all the different plates are much more visible so you mark better what is each armor plate. In the case of the small sword that is having the lion that is in the heraldry of the of the bard, I decide to go for grey colors and then I apply first Adeptus Adeptus Battle Grey. I use also screaming skill to do the claws on the hands of the hippogriff. Then I use more fun brown to highlight all the different belts and leather parts. I also do very soft highlight on the hippogriff tail. And of course I also highlight the small shot that is carrying the lion and I use Fortes Grey for that purpose. Here we have a better, a better picture how the heraldry is, is done. As I advanced before, on the case of the armor plate on the head of the hippogriff, I decide to paint the shield also in red. And this is a tip I also recommend to all of you. So all the golden parts that are prime in black, I will always recommend to use yander, dark sun or a similar yellow color as a base color before applying gold color. So as you can see here, on the floor de lis and also on the small shield that have on the armor plate, I apply yander dark sun. And this will be the base to later on apply gold on top. I use the same color to paint the small shields on the ribbon uh, on the on the neck and as you can see I use auric armor gold to paint the different golden parts. I also paint on gold color the small grill that you can find on the shield at the breast of the hippogriff as well as the floor of the leaves and other details on the armor plates. And at that point I decide to use Agrax Hearth Shade to do a wash on the hands of, of the hippogriff. 
The picture you can see better the result on this armor plate on the head of the hippogriff. Here, what I want to show is a small detail I did on the clothes that the hippogriff, on the hippogriff. You can see that I did this dark brown um, details, and I think it's helping to have a much better impression, and it's, it's, I think it look, it's looking much nicer uh, in the clouds when you do this small detail. So here, what I want to show is the colors I'm going to use to paint the beak. So I will go from very dark on, on the peak of the peak using the red bark and then I will pass by Cambridge brown and then I will use racket flesh and then uh, some touches with pallid witch flesh to do some details with very height with very light colors. And here you can see what I tried to explain before. So it's the painting work on the beak. So you see that the extreme the peak of the beak is very dark and then I use very clear colors at the root of the beak. I think in that picture you also can see a very good nice detail how it's looking like you now the beak and the claw. And then for the tongue inside of the beak what I use is first I, I use a base as a base color I have to battle gray and then I highlight with fortis gray. So I want to make the, the tongue gray 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 color. Well, here we have another close-up of the face of the hippogriff. I wanted to show here that I also use black to paint the, the eyes. But what I want to mention is here that I detect that I made some mistakes on the beak. So later on I will correct them. So sometimes when I'm taking pictures and I'm watching them later, uh, later I see some defects that I correct uh, um, when I have some time. So for example in that case some of the white highlights are too heavy and I will smooth them later on. And in the case of the A, what I did is I, I used a very light yellow, darn yellow I think it's called, from H paints and then I make a very thin line on black to do the pupil of the A. Yeah, here I can confirm that it's done yellow, the color I use for the A. Then I did seraphine sepia wash on the golden parts to, give, to make some shading. I also use that on the small shields that it has on the legs, on the armor plates of the legs, to make this effect that the middle is darker and then the edge is more bright. And at that point, I decided that it's a good moment to start doing the highlight on the main body of the hippogriff. So first, I start cleaning the wash using Tausep Ochre, that is the base color I used before. And later on, I did a second phase where I combined Tausep Ochre with Flayed One Flesh. As you can see here, I mix them, and normally when I mix, I keep some light parts and some darker parts in my mixing in order that I can compensate if I have if it's too light or it's too dark. So I I, why I mix and I calibrate the mixing at the same time that I'm painting. And this is how it's looking like after doing the highlights on all the main body. In all in all this miniature all the red areas are painted in the same way. First I, I used a um, corn red, then I did a wash with Agrax Earth Shade, I cleaned the wash with corn red and then I do a highlight with blood red. And it's what I want to just show here is after doing the highlight with blood red. Here we have a more general view of the work done at this moment on the hippogriff. Here we have a view of the head of the hippogriff and also you can see some of the highlights on the main body. And at that point I decided to start doing the the wings and I did a little bit of experimentation on the wings. So what I will do on the wings is I, I use Screaming School as a base color for the wings and then I want to do several layers of dry wash. So I will start with Tauser Grip, Wolfram Frank, and then I will finish with Rhinox Hide. 
the idea is I want that the rod of the wings, the part that is more closer to the body, is lighter, and then I go, it goes degradating uh, to darker color. So let's see in the next picture you see what I mean. This is what I was trying to explain before. So if you see the base of the wing is very clear, then I apply a first dry brush with Tausep Okwe, then apply a second dry brush with Morphan Brown, and then I finally on the end of the feathers, of the bigger feathers, I apply another dry wash with Rhinos High. And this is the, result, the end result. Here a far picture how it's looking like. Of course, I also did that at the bottom part of the wings. So I did that in both sides of the wings. And then to give volume to the feathers on the wing, I did first a wash with Seraphine sepia and what I have to say is to do this wash I did in two phases first I did a wash on the top of the wings and leave the miniature without touching until the wash was completely dry here I just want to show that the color I use is Seraphine sepia and then once the top of the wings is completely dry I apply again a wash on the bottom so I did in two phases because I want I want to be sure that the wash is not is not leaking to some areas and is not accumulated in, in any part of the wings. So I want to be I want to have a smooth wash. So this is why now I do a second wash on the other side of the wings and I leave the miniature lying upside down until the wash is completely dry. And here you see how it's looking like after applying the wash on the wing. And once the first wash is completely dry, I use a second wash on the darker parts of the wings using Agrax Earth Shade. And again, I use the same method. First, I do the wash on the top part of the wings. And once the, the first wash is completely dry, I do a second wash on the bottom side of the wing. And at the end, I did a very small touch with Noon Oil Wash on the very extreme of the wings. As the final touch, I apply again Seraphine Sepia on the wings, but this time I only apply on to differentiate the different levels of feathers. So you see here, I'm trying to, to make or to, to make more visible the different lines between the feathers. And this is how it's looking like when the wash is completely dry. And then I also did a very smooth dry brush with flayed one flesh, just on the most clear areas. And now some pictures of how it's looking like the hippogriff at that stage of the painting. Here we have a front view how it's looking like. I'm quite happy with the end results on the wings. And here just some more views. So in the next video I will show how I paint the rider. As you can see at the bottom of this picture, at the end of this picture you can see that it's also painted. But I prefer to do two separate videos, one from the hippogriff and another one for the rider. And that's all for this video. So I think it has been helpful for you and I've been able to teach or to show you some techniques. Please comment and like if you like it. Thanks a lot for watching. See you again later. Bye.